welcome everybody once again in today's class let us discuss about projections and map so in today's class we will be discussing about projection coordinate system and map projection a reference ellipsoid types of ellipsoids datum scale maps and in maps we will be discussing about analog versus digital maps earth and its shape the misconceptions about the earth and its shape and finally the map projection so let us discuss one by one so what is projection you have already studied projection in your uh, engineering graphics so you know how to project and draw the models of simple elements which we which we come across our day to day life so now what is projection it is the projection is the mathematical transformation of locations in the three dimensional space of earth's surface onto the two dimensional space of a map sheet so projection means we know the real thing see Uh, our geographic information system deals with earth so earth is a three dimensional space earth's surface is a three dimensional space so we convert the three dimensional earth's surface into a two dimensional map that is called projection here so how can we transform or how can we project this 3d earth into a 2d map so your projection can be cylindrical conical or planar or azimuthal so in order to obtain the cylindrical in order to perform cylindrical projection you have to go for tangent across line and for conical also along a cone the tangent across line and for a planar or azimuthal projection the tangent across a point okay now the cylindrical projection can be tangent case or secant case the conical projection also can be tangent case or secant case and the planar projection also can be tangent case or secant case so all these that is a cylindrical projection conical projection and planar projection are classified into or uh, can be done in two ways that is uh, tangent type tangent case and secant case so now you can see the cylindrical projection right so you can see the cylinder how the earth is projected in cylindrical form at this second one is the transverse cylindrical form you can see the transverse cylinder and how the earth is projected now this is oblique cylindrical so the cylinder is uh, having some angle and how earth is projected in this oblique cylindrical surface now this is what is called the secant cylinder okay similarly we have conical secant conical so planar surface this is a plane okay so this is a plane surface so planar and secant planar now the normal transverse and oblique you can see here see this is the equator this is the meridian and this is the great circle okay so when you are taking along the when you are uh, rotating about the normal axis equator it is about the normal axis then transverse is along the meridian this is the equator meridian and this is the large circle see in equator is also a large circle now what do you mean by a large circle
large circle i mean uh, actually it is not large it is great circle so what do you mean by a great circle great circle means it is the largest possible circle that can be drawn around a sphere now you can see here this is a sphere right so what is the largest circle or the greatest circle largest possible circle that can be drawn on a sphere that is called great circle the equator is one of the is another of the earth's great circles that means if we were about to cut into the earth's right or its equator we will have two equal halves if we cut along the equator we will get two equal halves similarly if we cut along the great circle also we will get two equal halves so here when we cut along the equator we will get a northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere okay so so what is equator equator is the only east west line that is a great circle so in east west line the great circle is an equator okay so as i have as i have, as we have discussed so here the center line is the equator for the normal case for transverse case the center line is the meridian and for oblique case the center line is the great circle all the geometric properties tends to preserve along the central line and nearby area okay so all the geometric properties tends to preserve along the center line depends upon the equator meridian and the great circle so how the cylindrical uh, scale is taken that is from 180 to 190 okay here this is conical scale so 0 to 180 to the left and 0 to 180 to the right and how the earth is projected in a uh, conical surface here how the projection is made on a cylindrical surface okay now this is a planar surface so this is a plane so here also from 0 to 180 and from 0 to 180 okay so how earth is projected on a spherical plane or a planar surface not spherical on a planar surface so the idea of map projection is about preserving the properties of real world feature when they are depicted on a map so what is the importance of a map projection you have to preserve the properties as we have discussed earlier the properties are preserved along the uh, central central line along the equator or meridian or along the great circle so our idea of projecting the real earth on the map is to preserve all the properties of the real world and the properties can be area shape distance and direction for the spherical earth all the four properties are applicable but in the case of map projection only few of them can be preserved simultaneously so you can preserve the uh, properties as layers see when you take the spherical earth that is when you consider the earth in real all the four properties are applicable but when you take when you convert this uh, real world problem into map when you convert the real world the three dimensional onto two dimensional map only you can uh, preserve a few either you can preserve the area and the shape or area and the distance etc sometimes distance alone so you have to uh, when you are considering the map you have to project it into different layers now uh, we have already discussed about a rectangular coordinate system 
so a coordinate we know rectangular coordinate system means it is the x y coordinate right planar coordinate so a coordinate a coordinate is a set of numerical values that fixes the location of a point in a space of a given dimension a map is a two dimensional space in which location of a point is fixed by a set of two numerical values x and y so that is called rectangular coordinate system we can fix any point on the real world into the map with the help of x and y coordinates rectangular coordinate system is the simplest coordinate system used for fixing the location of any real world feature into two dimensional space two dimensional space in this case is defined by two straight lines intersecting each other at right angles called axes and they define the direction of two families of lines right so which means see when you draw two lines perpendicular to each other that make your axis so that makes your reference axis and any point or any uh, feature you locate on this map will be with respect to this axis and so for example you are marking this point so you can uh, define the oblique nature also that is you can define the direction with respect to the axis of this point the point of intersection of the two lines is called origin so this the point of intersection of the two perpendicular lines is called origin the coordinate of any point is defined by two fixed distances measured perpendicularly from these two lines we as we all know all very well right for defining this point we need x and y so it can be defined by two fixed distances measured perpendicularly from these two lines along with rectangular coordinate system there are others also like polar coordinate system now coordinate system and map projection the relationship between coordinate system and map projection is crucial since they are constructed based upon map projection but they are not map projections themselves the function of a map projection is to define how positions on the earth's curved surface are transformed onto a flat map surface a coordinate system is then superimposed on the surface to provide the referencing framework by which positions are measured and computed so what do you mean by that see there is a relationship between coordinate system and map projection which means see the earth is a, a real world right it's a three dimensional but when we transform it into a map when you convert it into a map that will be converted with respect to some coordinate systems with respect to planar coordinate system or with respect to polar coordinate system okay and uh, your projection it depends upon or your map it depends upon how you have projected and what is the function of the map it defines the position we know earth's surface is a curved surface so the curved points on the curved surface or the positions on the curved surface should be defined or should be transformed into the flat surface of your map so once the points are transformed on the flat map surface flat map surface then the coordinate system is superimposed on the map surface in order to give some referencing framework so now there are several projected coordinate system in use for example the universal transverse mercator coordinate system state plane coordinate system Wisconsin transverse Mercator coordinate system and several others. See, depending upon your uh, usage, depending upon your uh, purpose, depending upon your function, your need. 
okay so depending upon the needs of several uh, concerns they have developed different coordinate systems just remember there are different coordinate systems now what is reference ellipsoids so all the measurements are done on the surface of the earth various computations are required to determine the coordinates distances area etc so for these computations of uh, distances area computations of the properties we use this ellipsoid so the surface of the earth is irregular and therefore unsuitable for such computations we need a smooth mathematical surface for these computations okay the best mathematical figure that can represent the earth is an ellipsoid so ellipsoid is used as the reference now we will see the types of ellipsoid so first type of ellipsoid is best fit ellipsoid or local ellipsoid so based on the measurement within the region so it best fits that region only so only for a particular region that is why we call it as local see there are two different things in any problem you take that will be or any uh, theorem or any uh, technique you take that may be global or there may be local local means for a particular region global means for a whole so the center of such a reference ellipsoid does not coincide with the center of gravity of the earth because you are considering only for a particular region so example is everest ellipsoid so everest ellipsoid will be used only for the region in and around the everest second is geocentric ellipsoid so the send, so this will be global one this is a global one geocentric ellipsoid is a global ellipsoid the center of geocentric ellipsoid coincides with the center of the earth this types of ellipsoid can be used worldwide so example is wgs 84 ellipsoid wgs means world geodetic system wgs means world geodetic system and uh, this wgs 84 means this was developed in the year 1984 this is actually see wgs 84 means world geodetic system 1984 and this is nothing but a data featuring the coordinates that changes with the time and this uh, wgs 84 ellipsoid is defined and maintained by united states national geospatial intelligence A agencies that is nga national geospatial intelligence agencies okay this is far away from our syllabus so that's all just remember this wgs means world geodetic system world geodetic system uh, it is a global one applied for the whole world whereas everest ellipsoid is for the everest region so that is a local one so we have two types of ellipsoid best fit ellipsoid and geocentric ellipsoid now you can see here see previously we saw you cannot exactly calculate the properties of the earth because the surface of the earth is irregular you can see here see this green green irregular closed figure this green irregular closed figure is the surface of the earth that is earth's surface now next this red ellipse that is your geocentric ellipsoid you have a uh, see this uh, irregular earth's surface is assumed to be a geocentric ellipsoid a perfect ellipsoid that is you this red circle and for this 
red closed figure for this red ellipsoid the center point is this so that is the center of geocentric ellipsoid center of geocentric ellipsoid now the best fit ellipsoid what is the best fit ellipsoid that is for this irregular shape of the earth the best fit ellipsoid is represented by this blue color ellipsoid so this is called best fit ellipsoid and the center point of this best fit ellipsoid is this center point of for this blue color ellipsoid that is center of best fit ellipsoid now what is datum datum is a model that it describes the position direction and scale relationship of a reference surface to positions on the surface of that so we use datum for referring any points on the surface of the earth so there these are the different types of datum and there are many more many more i have given only three examples so one is indian datum uh, the next one is uh, world geodetic system 84 90 world geodetic system 1984 that is wgs 84 datum the next one is itrf itrf means the international terrestrial terrestrial reference frame the international terrestrial reference frame that is itrf just uh, different or various uh, datum reference datum so with uh, this reference datum you can uh, locate the positions direction and scale of any other points on the earth's surface now what is scale only on a globe is a scale constant you all know what is a globe right so it is possible to have a constant scale in different areas of map but we can get close map has a fixed scale but gis is scaleless so that is the difference between map and gis so map you know you have only fixed scale constant scale but in gis we don't have a scale means the data in a gis may be enlarged or reduced to any size because the gis is a digital one right gis is digital so you can enlarge it or reduce it to any size so if you have this particular area you can uh, enlarge a particular area to a different scale or to a larger scale however if we go too far from the scale at which map was made before it was captured into the disk problems of scale appear okay now scale is map distance divided by ground distance so three ways three different types of scales first one is representative fraction so rf we represent it by rf it is the ratio of distances on the map to the same distances on the ground so we take it as 1 is to 1 lakh so if it is 1 lakh distance on the ground sorry 10 lakhs or 1 million okay if it is 10 lakhs distance on the ground the scale is taken as 1 now so it can be represented as 1 is to 10 lakh or 1 by 10 lakh second type of scale is statement scale or we call it as verbal scale verbal or oral so it expresses the ratio in words if it is 1 is to 10 lakhs we call it as 1 mm to 1 km so you express it in terms of words instead of using 1 is to 10 lakh you call it as 1 mm is to 1 km 1 mm to 1 km so that is verbal scale bar scale next is bar scale it is a linear graphical scale drawn on the map so you can see here 
how the map is drawn so what is a map it is a graphical representation of ground reality map is not real but it is the representation of what is real so objects on the ground are reduced to a certain scale and represented on maps maps not a reality in excel in itself so nothing but maps are not real but the representation of the real earth that is map now what are the difference between analog maps and digital maps so maps can be analog or digital what is the difference so you can here see here analog map and digital map so by looking into the analog and digital maps the figures itself uh, you can you can understand the difference analog map and digital map so analog maps it is a rigid form of map where message is conveyed by virtue of symbology see different symbols uh, for roadways you can give the symbol like this for a railway track you can give the symbols like this okay like this uh. so in analog map the message is conveyed or uh, the information about a particular region is conveyed by symbology symbologically but in digital map maps are in digital media now analog map is measurable but not interactive you can measure it is measurable because it is in terms of scale right so you can measure it it is measurable but not interactive whereas digital map are interactive options according to map objective so when you come for digital maps example is just right just uses digital maps so when you come to digital maps you can interact interaction of interactive options according to the map objective if your map the purpose of your map is for agricultural purpose you will get all the details related to the agriculture so that is why we call it as interactive options interactive digital maps are interactive so analog maps are always projected whereas digital maps can be in both 2d and 3 dimensional format here uh, pro always projected means it can only be 2d digital maps can be 2d and 3d format now analog maps are difficult to integrate with other data that is see if you want to superimpose one more information that is not possible it is difficult possible but it is very difficult and it will not be it will not give you good look but uh, digital maps are easily in easy integration with other data now earth and it, the misconceptions misconception about the earth and its shape okay so the first misconception is earth's surface is a plane surface no this is a first misconception the second misconception is if we are going to sail further we are going to fall away one day see it's a flat surface so this is earth's surface if we sail further we will fall one day that is the second misconception about the earth the third misconception is earth is a rectangular earth but what is real okay you can see the earth the earth is represented in the terms of geoid or ellipsoid okay so this already we have seen earlier this green is the reference geoid surface red is the reference ellipsoid surface and blue is the topographical surface see this is the real surface this is real this green is geoid and this red color line is ellipsoid okay 
can see clearly so the fact is that earth is flattened slightly at the poles and bulges somewhat at the equator mathematical shape of the earth is an ellipsoid a geometrical figure which would be obtained by rotating an ellipse about its shorter axis so mathematical shape is needed for uh, determining the properties uh, if you don't have a mathematical shape you, you will not be able to obtain the uh, properties right area shape direction etc now how the map is projected so earth's surface in reality is a curved surface with no perfect geometrical shape mapping in a globe is an easy way to map the earth measurement as well as sharing of data and details is always difficult if a map is represented on globe so projection is a method by which the curved surface of the earth is represented on a flat surface so how what is map projection okay so this includes the map projection includes two operation first one is alteration of scale and transformation to plane surface so you fix the scale then you transform the real map into plane surface so how the process from earth to map how the process is made so this is the earth so you can represent the earth as an ellipsoid best fitting ellipsoid or the geodetic or horizontal datum then you can map the surface it can be on a surface plane surface plane or conical or cylindrical coordinate systems so different types of maps cylindrical map projection conical map projection and surface or azimuthal map projection so in order to conclude to conclude the numerous projections have been invented and arguments continue about which is best for which purposes so if, even after the scientific developments the technological improvements even today there are lot of arguments going on which projection which uh, which projection is suitable for uh, best representation of the earth okay so all our approximations you can approximate it closer but not to the reality that is uh, that uh, one thing we have to accept it always okay thank you for today so thank you we will meet in the next class thank you